We will be making a traditional rubber mold using natural rubber that we will vulcanize with heat and pressure. Um, first start with your prototype or, or object to be molded and make sure you finish it to a fine sandpaper or a rubber wheel finish or a nice satin finish. You don't need to polish but it should be quite close to finished because otherwise it will pick up all the imperfection in your metal. We then solder a brass sprue onto your model, hopefully in a, a thicker part if possible, on the side so it doesn't impede with your design and always picture the wax flowing through and filling the entire object. So position your brass sprue somewhere where it's not the wax is not going to bottleneck arriving into the mold. We are also going to use a cone that fits perfectly well into this brass rod. And the cone is to prepare the mold to uh, fit well with the wax injector. The cone leaves a, an opening into our rubber, rubber mold. And then when we uh, put the rubber mold into the opening of the wax injector it fits perfectly and it fills up the mold without spilling over so use the cone provided as well as the sprue provided for this purpose for our uh, rubber mold we'll use the traditional uh, natural rubber and it's the gold label uh, it comes in pre-cut as well as strips we will be using strips so we will mark with the mold that we've chosen and then we will cut our strips accordingly. So take the mold, make a pen mark onto the fabric side, the yellow side, and just cut. Cut the entire strip or at least enough to have enough layers uh, to cover your chosen mold plus two. So when you pile all of your rubber layers, you need to have two extra over the mold, taller than the mold. So in this case, let's remove one. I have two extra, so that is perfect. And now we will cut the corners on each just to fit a little bit better into our frame, our aluminum frame. It does not have to be a perfect fit but close is good. The pressure will fill all the little gaps. If you are not certain, it's better to have more than less, but again, it does not have to be perfect. When we assemble the layers together, it's really important that the fabric side or the yellow side in this case is at the top of the mold as well as at the bottom of the mold. All of the rest will be removed, all of the coating will be removed so the rubber sticks together, but we want the fabric side at the top and at the bottom, not the blue plastic side. When assembling your mold, you can choose to insert your cone at the beginning and build your mold around the cone. I prefer to insert it at the end when everything is put together, then I insert my cone. Split your pile in two and then flip one end so you end up with the fabric on each end as mentioned earlier. Take your center strip and prepare to cut a bed or an opening, if you will, for your object. If your object is very thin, you may not have to do that, but if your object is thicker than a millimeter and a half, you need to cut an opening to um, contour your piece as well as the brass sprue. So you can take your pen and draw onto the fabric side and then you cut roughly your shape. Cutting with scissors is fine. If you prefer an X-Acto knife, be very careful not to get hurt, but you can use an X-Acto knife, but scissors is close enough. You don't want to cut too big. You want to cut so the piece will be snug into the rubber. 
So a little extra like this, if it's pushing it out, that's fine. It'll all fit into the mold and push everything tightly together. Now we can prepare the layer right below it. So you can remove the, at the bottom, you can remove the blue plastic side and you can stick them together. I like to assemble my rubber mold outside of the aluminum frame, but if you prefer, you can assemble inside the frame so things are maybe a little bit easier to hold together. I prefer to do it outside and then I shove it in nice and tight. So you can do your best to line up everything. Again, always remove the coating before putting them together, otherwise it will not vulcanize. And if you assemble inside, this is just how it looks. It's just a little tighter. We can sandwich our piece now in, but first we need to fill the underneath. So the hollow shape underneath must be filled. So we use our leftover that we cut away earlier. So shaping it up roughly to fill the opening. If there's little bits of the fabric or plastic, remove everything. Some people warm up the rubber with a hair dryer or in the vulcanizer just to soften it a little bit to do this part. I don't find that necessary. I just cut it up and assemble as is. And you can use little bits if you've cut too much and extra. As long as you shove it in there with some pressure, it'll fill out. The mold will fill out all the small areas. Say goodbye to your prototype. It's about to be buried in here until you reveal it in the end. So we need to put it in here nice and snug in our opening. And that's why one of the reasons I find it easier outside of the frame is then you can like really open the edge and really fit it in there nice and snug. And now we will add our layer onto the top, removing the blue plastic and sandwiching it for now. I make sure I don't trap any air bubble. And this is now the center of our mold. All that we need to do now is to go into both direction. Fill the bottom and fill the top of course by removing all of the plastic layers and just keep on adding until you've used all of your layers that you calculated leaving of course the yellow or the fabric part at the top and at the bottom again if you prefer you can do all of this step inside of the aluminum frame for support or outside and then we'll put it in at the end If you make a mistake and one piece is put the wrong way, meaning the blue towards the outside, it's okay as long as at the end you have the two yellow, the two fabric on top and bottom. So right now it fits in well. We still need our two extra. All the layers are in place. If you did not insert your cone, don't forget to take the whole mold out 
and now we can cut to insert the cone. So I take my solder snip and I just plunge and snip all around the sprue and that creates a space for the cone. And I like when the cone is tight anyway and you just push it tight in there and fit it in the frame and that's the best because it adds a lot of pressure and, and helps solidify everything really nicely and tight. I have nine layers for my mold. This is important because we vulcanize seven minutes per layer. So nine times seven is 63 for my length of time in the vulcanizer. I make sure that I even out my mold with my two extra, one at the top, one at the, at the bottom. While preparing your rubber mold, be careful not to drop a piece on your bench, on the drawer at the bottom, or on the peg and pick up some dirt. Anything that's there that's embedded in the rubber will be there after vulcanizing and will cause you issues in uh, your waxes as you are injecting them. After packing your mold into the aluminum frame, we will put it to vulcanize in the vulcanizer. So this is simply two hot plates that we can sandwich together really tight, sandwich the mold in between the two plates. And uh, there's two heat controller, one for the top, one for the bottom. We never change that because most molds are vulcanized at the same temperature, so don't change the temperature on the dial. Open it up, put your mold in the middle use an instrument if you have to and then close the mechanism and you want to tighten this really well for some of you it will be as hard as you can go and others if you're a very strong person you want to go quite quite hard you wait five minutes and then you come back and tighten again and then you leave for the amount of time that your mold requires. So seven minutes per layer. I had nine layers times seven, that's 63 minutes, minus the five minutes that I used at the beginning after tightening. So 63 minutes total for this thickness. And then take it out with whatever instrument you can get and put it on a towel and let it cool completely and close the plate the two plates together for the next person